paperwork done. I think it's time to get some coffee going. And I'll tell you about this next adventure. This camp is known as Boxcar Cabin. It is located just off the Saline Valley Road in the Santa Rosa Hills. This site is a mining area known as the Buckhorn Claims and was last worked in probably the late 50s and early 60s. Oh, that's good. That Joshua Tree coffee is pretty good. All right, so let's let's give you a little tour of where we camp where we camped last night. Here's the Trailhawk, pack it up with stuff. So you came in two nights ago, right? Yeah, Wednesday night. Wednesday night, set up your home office here in the boxcar cabin. How was it? Fantastic. It was awesome. Probably the first time this place has had internet. There's a home office right there. Certainly, uh, oh, and a little hula girl. It's cozy in here. A little kitchen area on this side. The stove. Pretty neat. And of course the Joshua tree. We're probably only, I don't know, 10 miles away from the original Joshua tree. Showed you a video of that before. Post that up above and you can check that out. So our goal today is Saline Valley, right? Yeah, looking forward to it. We've been wanting to go there for a long time, so. Yep, it's uh, June June second. Yep. Uh, not not too hot yet, um, but we'll we'll see how it is. We're gonna head up to the Saline Valley and then uh, maybe into the Inyo Inyo Mountains, and we'll bring you along. Great night at Boxcar Cabin. Now we're uh, heading down, or heading up, I should say. We're going to head north through the Saline Valley. got ready to enter the national park, it was time to land the drone. Beautiful out here. It's amazing that one time this road was actually paved. See that little uh, grasshopper right there on the dashboard? Those things are everywhere. See how green this is. June 2nd, just incredibly green. This isn't good. It's only closed for some people. Let's see what this little informational sign says. All right, lilies of the desert. I'm really glad they put this informational sign out here. That road to the left to take you to the backside of Cerro Gordo up there. We're going to head this way. As noted on the sign, this area is known as Lee Flat and home to the largest stand of Joshua trees in Death Valley. So I've never seen that before on a Joshua tree. Looks like they're getting ready to bloom. Probably one of the healthiest Joshua tree forests I've ever seen. It's just beautiful. It amazes me that there's a cattle operation out here. This area is part of Death Valley and is known as the Nelson Range, but these cattle operators must have been grandfathered in. 
So we're up over 6,100 feet. You can see this is uh, used as cattle grazing land. Pretty amazing. I thought it was going to be pretty, uh, pretty hot and desolate out here. But it's only 71 degrees and beautiful and green. Unfortunately, those temperatures wouldn't last, and as we dropped into Saline Valley, they climbed rapidly. You got the Panamint Dunes down there, the Panamint Valley. Beautiful. Dunes are right behind that little ridge line. Flowers up here are just incredible. We entered Saline Valley through the aptly known South Pass. Saline Valley. Incredible. The amount of water you can find out here in the desert always amazes me. So incredible out there. That was only the first of many flyovers we'd have by the pilots of Naval Air Weapons Station China Lake, as clearly they loved the Saline Valley as well. I spotted something off in the distance in this wash, so we decided to take a look. It's a car. There's an engine on the ground, and then a car, a rusted car upside down. I'm hey, man, they went a long way to get rid of this car. Must have really hated it. <laughs> I think so. I'm, I'm guessing 70s. Yeah, that's right. All right. Tell me what you think this is. I don't see any markings. A little bit of chrome still on there. But they worked hard to get this thing out here. So we made our way to Salt Lake, which sits at the bottom of Saline Valley at about a thousand feet. See what's left of the salt tram back there? Goes right up that mountain there. The Saline Valley Salt Tram was an electrical area tramway that brought salt from the Saline Valley over the Inyo Mountains into the Owens Valley operated from 1913 to 1935. The salt was first extracted from Saline Valley in 1864 when a farmer residing in Owens Valley gathered some of it and sold it to some of his fellow settlers in the area, but they needed an easier way to get it over the mountains, hence the development of the tram. The Saline Valley was originally inhabited by the Shoshone, they lived here until the early 20th century, when the last of them moved to the town of Darwin. Both miners and cattle operators have also called this valley home. This 27 mile long valley is very remote. There's no developed roads here, so you will need a four wheel drive. Hello! That is very interesting. Let's get a picture. Got some vehicle parts here. This is certainly interesting. Street light up there. As we approached our location for the night, I wanted to take this opportunity to share that even though this location is listed on numerous maps and is a designated National Park campground, I never share the coordinates or directions of where these places are. And yes, for those who are wondering, you are not allowed to film inside national parks for commercial purposes without a permit. 
but fortunately for me, I'm just a tourist and I don't make any money off my videos. With that said, I do try and be very respectful and never film when other people are around. So we met one of the volunteer caretakers of this beautiful campground. And though this is part of the national park and your entry fee helps cover some of the costs, the bulk of the work is done by volunteers. They certainly appreciate donations. After getting camp set up, I decided to do a little bit of exploring. What you see here is the actual source spring for the two pools that are at the Palm Spring. You have the volcano and the wizard, both built in the late 60s to early 80s. Fortunately for us, since it was mid-June, we practically had this place to ourselves. And even though it was 100 degrees outside, the warm springs, though actually hot, felt pretty refreshing in the breeze. Not only did we enjoy it, but so did the donkeys. After watching our own private air show, it was time to get out of the sun and relax. Well, view out here, beautiful. Just finished a drink. It's called Not My Abuela's Martini. Pretty darn fantastic. And what do you got going here, Wes? Well, we got some uh, burrito shredded beef and beans. We're going to melt the cheese on the... On this pot over here and just some in the skillet. Looks good. Hopefully. Wow. One of those burritos looks better. Look at that view. Those burritos look fantastic. Fresh guacamole. Some cocktails. Salsa. Okay, you gotta you gotta give that, that okay. drink. Taste, oh, wait. Not my abuela's martini. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> Got a kick to it, too. After an incredible meal and a moonlit soak, we decided to call it a night. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to tread lightly, and our goal is to preserve these lands, not restrict them. So I hope you too will also venture outside. Time won't stop so 